In this video, I am going to talk about typical terms used to express the mechanical property of polymer like strength, toughness, brittleness and stiffness and also talk about how these terms are related to each other. I will also talk about the typical uh, molecular mobility happens in the sample during a tensile test. So let's start with the terms. When we talk about the mechanical property of polymer, we usually say the polymer is strong, tough, hard, brittle, stiff or soft. It is important that we understand what this term actually means because a better understanding of these terms will help us to understand which is the most important property for a certain application like car body parts need to be much more tougher than strong why let's find out it is also important that we know how to measure these properties so that we can compare different polymers and also modify polymer in such a way that it can be used for certain applications to understand these terms and their relationship, we have to first discuss the tensile testing method and the behavior of polymeric material under stress. When a load is applied on polymeric material, it shows deformation. The applied load is called stress and it is represented by force per unit area. A very simple way to calculate this is by dividing load by cross-sectional area of the sample. The deformation is the change in length of the sample during testing. The deformation is often expressed as percentage strain which is the ratio between change in length and initial length of the sample. Now coming to the method of tensile testing. We can perform tensile testing in two conditions either under fixed load or constant rate of deformation. In case of fixed load a specific amount of load is applied on the sample and deformation is measured over time. In case of constant rate of deformation the sample holding jaw moves at a constant speed like 5 cm per minute and to achieve this constant speed machine automatically increases or decreases stress to stretch the sample. Testing at constant rate of deformation is the most commonly used tensile testing method. Now if we look at the stress strain curve of a polymeric sample we can see that unlike metal amount of stress requires to deform the polymeric material changes with increasing amount of deformation. Polymeric materials mostly show two types of deformation. One is called elastic deformation and other is called plastic deformation. There is significant difference between elastic deformation and plastic deformation. Elastic deformation is usually instantaneous and also recoverable which means sample can return to its initial shape once the load is removed. In case of plastic deformation, it is time dependent and also this kind of deformation is permanent. In the elastic region, stress increases linearly with strain, which indicate material resistance to deformation. A stiff material will have very high resistance to deformation compared to a soft material. Therefore, the stiff material will have higher ratio of stress to strain. At certain stress level, also known as yield stress, in the picture, the point B, material's resistance to deformation decreases. As a result, material can be easily deformed. In this phase, we can see that strain 
increases without increasing stress. Polymer's resistance to deformation increases at higher strain level and it becomes harder to deform so higher amount of stress is required. In the picture we can see the transition from C phase to D phase. This behavior is known as strain hardening. Finally, material breaks at a stress value higher than the yield stress. So now we can see that polymeric material undergoes different rate and type of deformation when a stress is applied. Based on this deformation behavior, we can explain the different terms used to express the mechanical property of polymeric material. Let's first talk about strength and toughness. Strength of a material is its maximum stress value which is usually at break or failure point. So it is also known as stress at break. On the other hand, toughness of a material is the amount of energy consumed by the material before it fails. The toughness value can be measured by the area under the stress strain curve. A tough material is not necessarily will be the strongest material because a weak material with very high elongation at break can also absorb a lot of energy. So we need to keep in mind that strength and toughness of the material is very different properties. The strength is important when we do not want a material to fail. But toughness is important when we would like material to fail at a specific incident like car accident. Because during accident we would like car parts to absorb most amount of energy so that people feel less force. Therefore toughness is more important for car body parts than strength. But for chairs and other household goods we would like them to be more strong rather than tough. Okay. Now let's talk about brittle, stiff and hard material. Brittleness, stiffness and hardness of a material are the properties of the material which is related to their resistance to deformation. It can be either in the form of bulk material or surface deformation. Brittleness is the measure of elongation at break. In case of polymeric material, typically a brittle polymer will only sh show elastic deformation and elongation at break will be mostly less than 5%. Sometimes there is a confusion between brittle and stiff material. Both of them show similar deformation behavior like they show only elastic deformation. But a stiff material can have similar stress to strain ratio but usually a stiff material show higher elongation at break than a brittle material. Then what is the difference between stiff material and hard material? Many times when we talk about the hardness of the material we talk about their surface hardness like how difficult it is to scratch the material. But when we talk about the bulk hardness of the material, it becomes difficult to differentiate between a stiff material and a hard material based on their initial resistance to deformation. To differentiate between stiff and hard material, we have to look at the whole stress strain curve. A stiff and a hard material can have similar initial slope but a material with only elastic deformation will be called stiff material and material with both elastic and plastic deformation will be called hard material. Similarly, we can differentiate a hard material and a soft material 
based on their initial slope. A soft material will have a lower slope than a hard material. But we need to keep it in our mind that a soft material does not mean a weak or less tough material because even a soft material with high elongation at break and stress hardening behavior can emerge as a very strong and very tough material. Now as we know the basic definition of the terms used to express the mechanical property of polymeric material, let's compare the properties of five polymer shown here and identify which one is the strongest, toughest and flexible polymer. To know which one is the strongest material, we have to compare their stress at break. As sample D shows highest stress at break and A lowest it is very clear that sample D is the strongest and sample A is the weakest material. Next question is which sample is stiff and which sample is hard. As we explained previously both stiff and hard material show very high initial slope. So sample B, D and E belongs to the category of stiff and hard material. As sample B shows only elastic deformation and D and E shows both elastic and plastic deformation then sample B is the stiff and sample D and E is the hard materials. Based on the absolute value sample B can be also classified as brittle material as it is only shows showing elastic deformation and elongation at break of this material is lowest among all samples. In terms of identifying soft and hard material, sample C shows lowest initial slope so it is a soft material. Now the question is among all these samples which one is the toughest material? As toughness is the measure of material's ability to absorb energy before break and it is measured by the area under the stress strain curve. We can see that sample C, D and E are very tough material. By calculating the actual area we can identify which is the strongest among them. But it is clear from this example that it is not necessary that strongest material will be the toughest material. At the same time, a softer material can be the strongest or the toughest material. Please feel free to comment if you need further clarification on any specific point. Moving forward. Behavior shown by the polymeric material during tensile testing is the effect of molecular mobility in the sample. And by controlling the chain mobility, a material's mechanical property can be changed. So, first let's see the chain mobility in an amorphous polymer during tensile testing and identify the major changes during each transition point. At the initial stage, polymer chain in the sample remain in a random coil configuration. As a stress is applied, the coil first orient in the stress direction. This deformation is called elastic deformation. On further deformation, chain starts to disentangle. As it is easier to deform a disentangled chain strain increases without increase in stress. In a very basic sense, we can say that at yield point, chain disentanglement starts. As chain starts to disentangle and orient in the stress direction, chain also starts to crystallize. This phenomenon 
is called stress induced crystallization due to crystal formation it gradually becomes difficult to deform so higher stress is required to achieve deformation therefore we can see that stress increases after certain amount of deformation if polymer can achieve very high degree of stress induced crystallization like shown here in the picture sample breaks at significantly higher stress than yield stress so we can see that a polymer chain undergoes different type and extent of deformation when under stress this mobility can be facilitated or constrained by different ways to influence the deformation behavior some factors which can influence the mobility are listed here in my next video i will explain how these factors can influence the molecular mobility and therefore the mechanical property of the polymer thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to our channel to support our effort